Now, we're going to bring Carl on, and he's going to answer a couple of questions for me. Hey, Carl, how you doing? Hey, Harry. James? Yeah. Listen, just for us novice people who have just learned more information than we probably ever have in the past about barrels, uh, why would I choose, uh, let's say, the I think it was the S7 steel over the titanium? Uh, what would be my reasons for choosing a particular metal for my barrel? Well, in this, well, in this particular case, let me know if I'm overmodulating there, James. Um, no, you're doing this, good. In, in this particular case, um, barrels uh, for the last hundred years have pretty much been made uh, the same way as they are today. Uh, the steels have advanced forward today, and and a lot of the um, liabilities and uh, and the safety issues of barrels have been. Uh, 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 revised of late by use of more sophisticated steels. Uh, titanium itself is not suitable for barrels. Uh, it uh, contains a high degree of magnesium and while we are making some barrels out of titanium for a client or a customer, um, the bursting property is not that much greater than shall we say a uh, S7, as in Sam's S7 uh, vacuum arc remelt tool steel. What it does do is reduce the amount of liability to the end user. Uh, S7 tool steel has a uh, bursting property of eight times um, a greater amount, let's say, than 4140, which is uh, pretty, pretty commonly used today. Yeah, well, you know, I, I guess I had so much to learn, Carl. <laughs> I had such a steep mountain to climb just to keep up with that that uh, I don't know how many of our viewers uh, you did a great explanation. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt about that. I, I think we all learned something from that. We're actually looking forward to how you make stocks and everything else later. But um, that that's, that's a pretty good clip. Uh, I don't think many of us understood that. Uh, and... How is the demand for the solid, solid barrel? Well, I, quite frankly, I don't uh, know that uh, there are that many people who actually know about it. After all, most people still consider uh, making uh, one-piece solid barrels, say shotgun barrels, um, where the rib and the, uh, and the uh, fore-end hook and uh, all the complications um, uh, inherent in an over and under shotgun are made in one solid piece of steel. Many people still don't understand or even believe that it can be done. So it's being done here every day. We put it on our uh, shotguns as a normal course of, uh, uh, of manufacture, but we also offer it for the trade. So if all costs are the same, why would someone want to solder a, a rib or a side rib on a barrel? Why wouldn't you want the advantage of 150,000 PSI barrels or 350,000 PSI barrels uh, over something that's uh, 30,000 pounds per square inch? Makes no sense. The clock is turned. And uh, American technology says today that we've moved on. And so anyone who doesn't want to move with us is fine. Uh, they're just uh, putting uh, wood wheels on uh, current model Mercedes. That's all. <laughs> well, I guess that's one way of explaining it, Carl. Uh, now, all right, l let me just say that if I wanted a solid, solid barrel, now, and would I would I be a competitor? I mean, you know, you talked about the solid solid barrel rifle. Yeah, that was a new one for me too. Uh, am I a competitor who's looking for that barrel, uh, or am I, you know, am I going to go duck hunting with that? I guess I could, but I mean, affordability wise, are you really the service that you're looking at is for those people who these critical things are more important, or are we just looking at stepping up what's available in the trade? Um, no. Um, the solid, solid barrel is a design exercise in difficulty. All right? We've accomplished that on a normal basis. However, 
those solid solid barrels in an over and under are uh, dedicated type barrels for very expensive shotguns, your Fabrys, your Purdy's, your Hollands, and this sort of thing, where those barrels cost today $35,000, $50,000 for a Fabry. Uh, here, even if, in a, even if a one-off barrel were to replace, say, a Fabry barrel, the cost wouldn't be any more than $10,000. But to answer your question, we have monosolid barrels, all right? And so a monosolid then would be uh, the piece that goes into the action itself or the action of the gun and then two solid uh, fingers if you will on a solid front then could be soldered in uh, conventionally as we know a, a conventional monoblock today on your parazzi on your barrette on your browning etc the cost is the same the time to produce them is much reduced. The pressure and so forth and so on, uh, liability as far as that is concerned, is dramatically reduced. And so there is no reason uh, why, even if you own a, uh, a Remington 1100, a Mossberg, a Benelli, all of these barrels can make, be made under the same technology today. And we've drawn those and we're manufacturing those on order for customers today. Okay, so quite frankly, then, what you're saying to me is that I don't have to be uh, very wealthy. I just have to be able to contact you and say, hey, I'm stepping up to the next generation of barrels, and Carl's going to do it for me. Basically, that's what we're saying, right? Absolutely. Or get on the phone, call Remington. Get on the phone, call uh, Beretta Browning. I mean, we're making Beretta DT barrels now. I mean... Uh, the DT-10. We're making the SO Beretta barrels uh, today. Uh, we have uh, Fab uh, uh, Fabry and uh, Parazzi's and uh, uh, various different types of individual barrels on order today. But your manufacturer can produce, or we can produce these barrels uh, for your favorite gun today for your manufacturer. It's okay. ridiculous. Uh, this is probably a simple question, elementary for some of us, I'm sure, but it doesn't really make any difference what caliber, as far as the barrels go, right? I mean, you can make any caliber. We're talking about PSI that's way beyond even what I, I think I'll ever use, correct? Yes, there's nothing known uh, that we've discovered yet that can uh, blow up. Uh, one of our barrels, either a shotgun, most certainly a rifle, absolutely. Um, but the fact that we make a solid rifle, a one piece, why in the world would we want to make a rifle that's using patented technology from 1903? Right. Sorry, we can't go there. Right. Um, I was just handling a, one of our, quote, new... <laughs> Uh, Winchester uh, actions that we're producing for a uh, customer. First of all, we use the same technology on this action as we do on our shotguns, on our rifles, our one-piece rifles, our double rifles, etc. This is vacuum mark remelt steel. How many people did it take to produce this action for a client? One. A factory of one. So when you talk to me about Winchester needs 250,000 actions, why in the world are you using 4140? This is the most. This is the strongest action known to mankind today, and it takes one man to produce it. One. And we've got a factory back here, and we're delivering 50 today. I mean, it's. The world has moved on, and I appreciate your network for having an interest in the new American uh, uh, technologies that are changing the way the firearms business is today. 